Born into a family of scavengers and opportunistic thieves, this bird soars over some of the most unforgiving landscapes on Earth. Meet the King of Thieves, the Condor. Hi, I'm Danielle Defoe, and you're watching Animal Logic. Condors are some of the largest flying birds in the world. They're part of the New World vulture family, and like their cousins, they can soar for hundreds of kilometers every day in search of carrion. They evolved at a time when megafauna was common in the Americas, and there was an abundant amount of carrion. They fed on dead mastodons, mammoths, and giant sloths. But as the great American giants died out due to climate change and human predation, most condors ran out of food. Today, there are only two condor species, the California condor and the Andean condor. The North American species used to be found from coast to coast. Unfortunately, today they're only found in Arizona and California, where they feed on large marine mammals that wash upon the shore of the Pacific coast. Found in South America, the Andean condor feeds on dead llamas, guanacos, as well as dead livestock and cetaceans. Both species are huge, but the South American species is slightly beefier. California condors have a wingspan of up to 3 meters and weigh up to 10 kilograms, while Andean condors have a wingspan of 3.3 meters and can weigh up to 15 kilograms. This puts them among the largest flying species in the world. Only great albatrosses and some pelican species have a larger wingspan, and only bustards are heavier than the largest condors. Their enormous wings help them glide without making much of an effort. They have been observed soaring over an hour without flapping their wings. But compared to some of their extinct relatives, condors are just little runts. The most amazing of them was the giant pterator, which might have had twice the wingspan and four times the weight of an Andean condor. Being this huge means they have no predators when they're fully grown, but it also means they need a lot of food to survive. When looking for carrion, they look for smaller scavengers such as turkey vultures and corvids to help them find food. Turkey vultures are particularly useful because they have one of the most developed chemoreception systems among birds, so they can sniff out prey in forested areas. Condors can go several days without eating, but when they find food, they can eat several kilograms in one sitting. The condor's large beak is able to tear through thick hides more efficiently than a turkey vulture's. But once the condor has had its fill, the turkey vulture and other scavengers can access food that they otherwise couldn't, so it's mutually beneficial. The king looks after his people. Part of the condor's regal fashion sense is the frill of feathers at the base of their neck. California condors have a black frill, and the Andean condor has a white one. The South American condor also has a crown on its bald head. Their bald head is an adaptation for life as a scavenger. Having no hair or feathers makes it much easier to clean. It's basically the same reason why restaurant kitchens aren't carpeted. It also exposes pathogens to dehydration and ultraviolet light at high altitudes. The least majestic thing they do is the way they cool themselves off. Like other members of their family, they empty their cloacas on their feet. This is thought to protect them from the sun and prevent skin dryness. But these are not very important issues in the cold Andes mountain range, so South American condors often have uric acid buildup on their legs. It's called fashion, look it up! These beautiful scavengers are actually really great parents and partners. 
When they're about six years old, they become sexually mature and start looking for a partner. They mate for life, and a couple can stay together for over 50 years. They usually lay one or two eggs. Chicks hatch after two months of incubation. At six months of age, they can fly on their own, but stay with their parents until they're about two years of age. By then, the parents are ready to lay new eggs, so the older siblings get kicked out. Despite their careful parenting, California condors are critically endangered. In the 80s, the condor population of North America was in the double digits. A plan called the California Condor Recovery Plan was started, and it consisted of catching all the wild condors and creating a breeding process in captivity. Of course, there were ethical, economic, and ecological concerns, but the plan went ahead, and by 1987, all the 22 living California condors were in captivity. They were bred, and the chicks were reared using puppets to prevent them from imprinting on humans. A few years later, the first condors were reintroduced into the wild. Since then, their populations have been steadily growing, but they still face challenges, such as electric power lines, egg collection, lead poisoning from eating animals shot with lead bullets, and accidentally eating plastic. As of today, there are more than 450 California condors, and more are being born in the wild than there are dying. The Andean condor is doing better. They're protected across their range as they're the national bird of seven South American countries. There are about 10,000 Andean condors, and about two-thirds of them are sexually mature. Populations are reinforced by condors raised in captivity, usually in North American zoos. But in northern parts of their range, they're still decreasing. They're currently considered a near-threatened species. Thank you to all who've helped the California condor come back from the brink of death. And here's to more future successes. As you can probably tell, we here at Animal Logic are animal lovers. So when we found out that there was a way that we could help the planet while just browsing the web, we knew we had to share it. Tab for a Cause is a browser extension that donates money to charity every time you open a new tab. Tabbers have donated more than $800,000 already, and it doesn't cost you anything to use it. How does it work? Every time you open a tab, a customizable homepage is opened that shows small ads at the bottom that generate revenue. You then get to donate that money to a charity of your choice. There are nine charities to choose from, including Conservation International and Water.org, and you'll see exactly how much money you've raised. It only takes a moment to get started, so click on the link in the description and join the cause. So what should I talk about next? Please let me know in the comments and be sure to subscribe for new episodes of Animal Logic every week. Thanks for watching and see ya!